Hello, this video is going to cover solving problems unit using unit conversions and helping to estimate answers. We will often use uh, conversions in chemistry when doing calculations and we have to convert from one unit to another. We call this the factor label method or dimensional analysis and we use dimensional analysis to help us solve problems. In this video we will look at a few um, practice problems and work on them together. So a conversion factor is when we have a numerical relationship between two units and um, if I say that one mile is equal to 0 0.621, I'm sorry, one kilometer is equal to 0 0.6214 miles, we can put that in a fraction um, because they are equal to each other, then it will be, it's equal to one. And we can use these conversion factors because we can multiply any number by one um, without changing the um, we can multiply any number by one and conversions are equal to one. So here for an example, if we have 60 minutes is equal to one hour, we can write that in a fraction either with 60 minutes over one hour or one hour over 60 minutes. Equally, if we were looking at a metric equality, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, we can write either of them we can write them in either of these directions, depending on what our calculation is calling for. Uh, here, if you open this, if you open the uh, PowerPoint lecture, you will see these clickable links. You can click on them and watch other videos or other tutorials to help you with this type of um, these types of problems. So we are going to use these units and we multiply and divide using these units. So anytime we want to do a calculation with units, we always set up our calculations so as that we're starting with the, we begin our calculation with the starting quantity. So for example, how many kilometers are in 26.22 miles? Well, the number of kilometers is going to be equal to 26.22 miles times the conversion we have between miles and kilometers. Well, notice that miles get canceled out and we're left with kilometers in our answer. So we always want to set up our conversion factor so that whatever we want in our answer is found on top and the things that we don't want, we cancel out. Here is a list of a number of common equalities that are used. Um, the ones that are highlighted are also used in nursing and medicine. Another one that is important that is used in nursing and medicine are these pounds to kilograms and grams because most, um, most medicines, the dosage is based on kilograms of weight, not pounds of weight. So how do we solve problems using unit conversions? Well, anytime you're reading a problem, you first want to identify the given information, identify what we need, and then figure out what type of conversion unit you have to know you have to use and then test your problem. So let's do some practice. Let's write a conversion factor for the following pairs of units. If I want to know what is uh, an equality between pounds and grams, I would have to look at a table. A few slides ago, we saw the table and it said that one pound is equal to 454 grams. So we can write our equate, we can write our conversion unit in either way, one pound over 454 grams or 454 grams per one pound. What if we needed to write a conversion factor between these pairs of units? Well, I showed you a way how to use a number line and do conversions between two different metric units, but what if you did not know that methodology? First, we have to do some dimensional analysis. I know that one deciliter is 0.1 liters, and I know that one milliliter is 0.001 liters. To find out how many milliliters there are in one deciliter, I take 0.1 liter and multiply it by um, the equality of one milliliter is equal to 0.001 liter. And then we end up with 
100 milliliters because what are our conversion facts? So now what are our conversion factors between deciliters and milliliters? Well, um, now I can say that one deciliter is equal to 100 milliliters and I can write my conversion factor. So what did we do here again? We took what one deciliter is equal to in liters and then we use our conversion factor between milliliters and liters, right? So we can say that one deciliter is equal to 0 0.1 liters. That's a conversion factor. One milliliter to 0 0.001 liters is also a conversion factor. But to determine the, the conversion factor between deciliters and milliliters, we do this calculation. And now we have our conversion factors that we can use later on to do calculations. Let's do another practice problem, looking at this quick, simple problem. So it says a child is 21.5 inches long at birth. How long is this in centimeters? Well, remember our steps. First, identify the given information. That is that the length is 21.5 inches. So if you see inches, meters, centimeters, anything like that, we know that we're talking about length. And we want to know what is this in centimeters. So we need to know our answer in centimeters. What is our conversion factor? Well, for this type of conversion, being that we're going from we're going from a metric to, or we're going from English to a metric unit, you've got to use a table. On exams, you'll be given this information. This is one that you should remember. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. It's an exact conversion. Um, and now we can solve to determine the number of centimeters. So we always start with what we're given, 21.5 inches times the conversion. Notice that centimeters is on top because that's what we actually wanted in our problem. Let's do some more practice problems. Um, if Greg weighs 144 pounds, what is his mass in kilograms? Well, we first have to figure out what we're given and what we need to know. In yellow is what is given and what in, in green is what we need to know. So given I have 144 pounds and I need a conversion factor of pounds and kilograms, which is on our table, 2.20 pounds is equal to one kilogram. And now we can set up our equation. How many kilograms is equal to one is equal to 144 pounds? You always start with what you're given when you're solving these problems. So we have 144 times one kilogram per 2.20 pounds. Notice that kilograms is on top because we need to cancel out pounds and we're looking for kilograms in our answer. So we end up with 65.45 as our answer. Um, notice that we are using our original number for our, um, for our sig figs. We don't use we don't use the conversions in our sig fig calculations. So we need three sig figs in our final answer. Let's try more. Synthroid is used as a replacement for supplemental therapy for diminished thyroid function. A doctor's order prescribes a dosage of 0.15 milligrams of Synthroid. If tablets in stock contain 75 micrograms of Synthroid, how many tablets are required to provide the prescribed medication? Well, in yellow, we have what we're given. In green, we have what we're looking for. And in blue, we have a conversion factor. So stock solutions or however a medication is um, filled is actually going to be your conversion factor. So what do we have? We're given that we need 0 0.15 milligrams. And we're also given that it's 75 micrograms per tablet. And we want to know the number of tablets. So to set up our problem, we want to know how many tablets. You start with what you're given, 0 0.150 milligrams, and then we're going to multiply by a conversion unit. How would we write our conversion unit? Would micrograms be on top or tablets be on top? Correct. Tablets would be on top because we need to cancel out well, tablets would be on top because we need to know how many tablets we need. Notice here that I've got milligrams and micrograms. So these two don't cancel out. I need a conversion between milligrams and micrograms. And so 
micrograms are smaller than milligrams. Micrograms are 10 to the minus six. So one milligram is equal to 10 to the three micrograms. Notice that our milligrams cancel out and our micrograms cancel out and we end up with the number of tablets, two tablets. All right, so notice we use two separate conversions in solving this problem. Let's try some more. A patient is to receive 16 milligrams of methamazole, a drug used to treat hyperthyroid conditions. The drug is dissolved in a solution containing 8.0 milligrams per mil. What volume of solution should be administered? Well, I know I need 16 milligrams. I know I need, well, I'm given 16 milligrams and I need to find the volume of solution. And if the solution is 8.0 milligrams per mil, that's given as my conversion factor. So what am I given? 16 milligrams and my conversion factor that's 8.0 milligrams per milliliter. What do I need? I need milliliters of solution. So set up our equation. How many milliliters? You always start with what you're given, 16 milligrams, and then you're going to add your conversion. How will we write this conversion? Is milliliters going to be on top or, my, or milligrams on top? Yep, milligrams are on top. I'm sorry, milliliters are on top and milligrams are on the bottom. And we end up with 2.0 milliliters. Notice that we have two significant figures because both of our values that we're given are in, are in um, sig figs. Notice that this is like a concentration and it's not really a conversion in terms of, let's say, centimeters to meters. So we, are, we do consider the significant figures here because this is an actual concentration of a drug and not, let's say, meters to miles. Let's do another. A bottle contains 120 milliliters of cough syrup. One teaspoon is five milliliters, is given four times a day. How many days will elapse before a refill is needed? So what we're given is 120 milliliters. We need to know how many days. And our conversion has to do with the amount that's given. So we have 120 milliliters. Five milliliters is given to our patient four times a day. So that means that we have, we're using 20 milliliters a day. And we finally, we need to know the number of days. Notice that our dosage has a unit that we're looking for, well, that we need to cancel out from our given amount. So we need to know the number of days, starting off with 120 milliliters, because we need to know how soon is this, this medicine going to be used up. Then we use our one day per 20 milliliters, and we end up with six days. Ready for more? So not only do we need to use conversions for dosages and that sort of thing, but sometimes you have to convert before you can actually do a density problem or let's say a heat problem. So let's try one of those. What is the volume of a gold nugget that weighs 2.20 kilograms if the density of gold is in 19 grams per centimeter? Notice that uh, we need our volume in centimeters cubed, but our density is in grams and our mass that we're given is in kilograms. So what do we need to convert? We need to convert our kilograms to grams. So we know that for one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So 2.20 kilograms is equal to 2,200 grams. And we're given our density. So what do we need? We need our volume in centimeters cubed. We know our density equation is D equals M over V. So volume is gonna to equal to mass over density. Um, we put in our mass divided by the density and we end up with 115 centimeters cubed. Notice, um, notice that our density is in uh, two significant figures. So we have to give our answer in two significant figures. Next question, how many liters of fat would have to be removed to result in four pounds of weight loss? And the density of human fat is 0.94 grams. Well, notice we've got pounds 
and our density is in grams per milliliter. So, and our question is talking about how many liters and our density is in milliliters. So we have two things that we need to convert. First, we're given that we have 4.0 pounds. We need to convert that to grams because our density is in grams. So to convert pounds to kilograms, we say that there is one kilogram per 2.2 pounds, 2.20 pounds. And then to convert that to kilograms, we multiply by 1,000. So we get 1,818 or 1,800 grams. Now, depending on your calculations, it's a good idea to keep an extra digit and not round off step by step because the more you round off, the more inaccurate your or less precise your answer is. For this purpose right now, we'll go ahead and round off in between each step. Our density is given in 0.94 grams per milliliters. So now we need our, our volume in liters. So let's go ahead and calculate our volume in milliliters first, which is 1800 grams divided by 0.94 grams per milliliter. I get 19 point, 1914 milliliters. And uh, to convert that to liters, we simply move the decimal place over three places to the left. And we get 1.9 liters um, to stay in line with our two significant figures. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try to solve this problem on your own? When you're done, come back and I'll show you the answer. Okay. We're given that an antibiotic dosage of 500 milligrams is ordered. If this antibiotic is supplied in liquid form as 250 milligrams and five milliliters, the number of milliliters given is what? Well, the answer is B and let's see why. We're given 500 milligrams and we need to know the number of milliliters. We're given our solution is 250 milligrams in five mils. So how much of, the, of this medicine do we need to give 500 milligrams? Well, always start with what you're given, 500 milligrams times 5.0 mils per 250 milligrams. Notice that milliliters are on top so that our milligrams cancel and we end up with 10 milliliters. Hopefully this has helped you understand the remaining of unit one 